So for all of, all of you who have done really, really cool stuff in your career, if someone has never seen anything you've done before, what is the first thing you'd like them watching and why, and you cannot say Argyle? Henry, you start. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and keep it somewhat in the family. It's a, an old colleague of Matthew's. Uh, Man from Uncle, I think, would be his yeah. go to. Mine would be Black Mirror. Probably. All right, yeah. What's the question? What, uh, if the job is, that you did that you, what, you want to be a social. What is it? Yeah, like, oh, if, okay, if but no, not our guy. What job are you most proud of? Oh. I think is, is I imagine this. Yeah. Or, or it could just be something you want people, more people to watch. Oh, uh, there's a film coming out called Stuntman that that is a uh, pretty exciting film, I think. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. It's amazing. Sorry. Right. Going to the future. That, oh that, yeah. That idea. Yeah. I meant from the past. Don't rest on yeah. your laurels. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> rest on your future. And what laurels. from the past? And what from the past, Sam? Uh, the past, uh, Snow Angels. I just pulled that out of my butt. Oh. <laughs> It's not the first time he said um, that. <laughs> yeah, hi. I got nothing. No, I guess... Um, what do you got? I got uh, you. We all God. have. We How about waiting for Guffman? How about no. Beetlejuice? Okay, waiting How for Guffman. Oh, yeah, waiting for Guffman. Um, Thank you, Sam. I would probably have to say Kingsman. Because it, right, yeah. 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 yeah, it was the first time I felt like I could actually direct a film. So that was the first time that I felt like I've become a director. Last curveball before we get to Argyle. What is, for each of you, what is the most nervous you've been before the first night of filming uh, and why? Well, for me it was layer cake because I really had never even looked through a, a camera and uh, so that was my first time trying to, trying to direct a film. So that was pretty nerve wracking. And Lockstock as well, that was the first time I tried to produce a film and then I realized that none of us on the crew, director or me, had ever made a movie before and uh, it was the most fun I've ever had, learning to make a film while making a film. I'm gonna say Waiting for Guffman again, because it was the first of four improvised movies that I did with Chris Guest and Eugene Levy. And the night before Waiting for Guffman, I knew all the dialogue was gonna be improvised, but I just didn't know how it was gonna work. And Chris said, just don't, I'm just telling people don't try to be funny. But wow. then you just show up on set, everybody's got their characters, and then you feed off of each other and lift each other up. And, but yeah, that was scary. Amazing. Good scary. It's good to be scared, isn't it? Yeah, it's good yeah. to be scared, definitely. Yeah, I th I'd say Box of Moonlight is a movie I did with John Turturro oh. years ago. Oh, thanks. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, that, I was pretty scary on that. I was pretty scared on that. But the, it, fear's an interesting thing, isn't it? I mean, it comes out of nowhere on a film. Anxiety, what, what have you. It, it, it's so random sometimes. You might have prepared and done your work, or not, and and then it just comes out of nowhere. Sometimes I find it can be random. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was very, it was very very specific. It was that uh, shooting the last Jurassic. We were uh, the first movie to come back during the pandemic, and I was shop foreman, so I was the contact with SAG and responsible for the actors, and so. Um, coming back and shooting, knowing, you know, that this was very new terrain for everyone and it was very important that it worked, um, that was certainly the most nervous that I've ever been. Uh, and it also happened to be a scene that was the scene where I got like the most injured. It's when I was falling, falling um, out, of a, out of a parachute. I, this happens in movies for some reason that I'm in. Um, so it was sort of, yeah, ripped off a Band-Aid with that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, to everyone else's point, I think uh, you can get nervous and scared before most scenes, really. It, it's good to have that feeling. It, it means the scene is alive inside you. But before I knew that uh, was The Count of Monte Cristo, which was my first ever job. And I was fresh out of school and first ever professional job. And um, I was terrified. It was, it was a big movie. And I just didn't know what to expect. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it. And uh, yeah, that was a that was a pretty terrifying experience. Well, it must have been pretty terrifying putting on the the cape. <laughs> no. Yes, Matthew, that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let, yeah. Steve. 
Uh, so this is for the cast. You guys have read a lot of scripts, and I'm curious, what is it actually like reading a script like this? Because it's so unique with the way it does its twists and turns, and each act is, you know what I mean, it's so different than most narrative scripts. Almost as good as watching the movie. <laughs> really, it was a, yeah. that, I hate to, you know, overuse a word, but uh, Paige Turner really was like, oh my God, no, what? You know. Yeah. yeah. Jason Fuchs, this incredible, incredible writer, producer on this film, um, wrote Wonder Woman, uh, knows what he's doing. And, and just, it was one of those kind of, like Catherine was saying, like one of those unbelievable magical reads where you're just like, what? This is so good already. And this is just meant to be a template for the film. And then it was really wonderful to, to get to see, you know, Matthew's partnership with Jason. Jason has said to me that it's the most inclusive experience that he's had as a writer. Um, and I think that the end result is, is, is what it is, you know, in, in large part because of that partnership. Anyone else? Could you remind me of the question, please? I was just so enthralled by that answer. <laughs> that, uh... The script, what did you think when you read it? Uh, well, it was one of those scripts which you know, as you guys know, lots of twists and turns. And you can almost see it in your mind's eye until you realize Matthew's in charge. And then you realize it's gonna be at least 12 times bigger than that. And so it, it was exciting. It's one of those things where you think this is a special moment, this is a special occasion, this is a, something original, some original IP. And you know, as, as you guys all know, I, I'm, I don't necessarily, necessarily do original IP that often. Um, <laughs> And it was an exciting prospect, especially when um, you know Matthew's in charge and you know you can trust him. I'm a huge fan of Matthew Vaughn's action set pieces. Uh, I just, yeah, you should clap because they're fucking awesome. So, <laughs> like, so I'm curious for the for the people that were involved. Actually, everyone is involved in a little bit of action. Uh, I'm just curious, what was it like on set filming with Matthew with action and like, for example, the train fight or the smoke dance or Oil. I mean, because they're all so different than what you've seen in other movies. Me or them? Well, let's actually, with the cast, talk a little bit about what it's like. What it was said, and then Matthew, I have a follow-up. Well, he, Matthew wants something really unique, and that's why he hires the best people around him. And, and we mentioned the, uh, the great Brad Allen who passed away. Damian Walters was his protege, and he shot a lot of second unit and um, directed second unit. And then we had, uh, and Brad was a protege of Jackie Chan. So that's the, the lineage of that stylized violence in the film. And Matthew wants a sense of humor. I think that that's what's so unique about this, the, the violence, the stylized violence in his films is that it's, it's got humor. And uh, that's what makes it interesting. Can you guys talk a little bit about what it's actually like to film some of these sequences? Yeah, challenging. Yeah, it's challenging because it's new techniques. And I've, I've done a fair few uh, fight scenes throughout my career. And walking into this, we knew it was going to be something different. And Matthew said, look, everything we're doing is going to be brand new. And it may or may not work. So you're just going to have to work really hard in the rehearsals and see, see what happens. And then we'll try and shoot that on, on small cameras in rehearsal. And then come the day of shooting, everything may change. It may or may not work. And, and, and we pushed and pushed and pushed and all that rehearsal time and, and all the work that Matthew puts into pre-production pays off because Sam and I on that train scene, for example, it seemed to go fairly seamlessly. And it was only because of the hard work put in. And so that makes a big difference. You go into a scene like that, you do your bit, you do your hard work, you do your prep, and everyone else has done it as well. And it turns out to be a really fantastic scene. And we filmed that in the first two weeks, which I think helped. We weren't physically exhausted. So it was, um, I, I like to start sequence, uh, start movies with a strong, hard sequence because it gets the crew up to speed very quickly. And um, like the first thing we shot on Kingsman was the church sequence. And um, it's just, I, I think it's, uh, yeah, it, 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 as um, he liked improvising, there's a lot of popping the cherry. And um, we got through it. Matthew, I'm so curious what you're like, because um, you not only are you the director, but you're also the producer. So what is it like directing on set when something isn't working? Does the producer head ever come on and say, you know what I mean, like what's that balance for you? I mean, it really is Jekyll and Hyde. Um, and 
it's pretty intriguing that like from Layer Cake and uh, Stardust, the producer in me was a lot stronger than the director. And um, and then I, I think I wrote, uh, read a uh, Billy Wilder quote that um, he, he said to an executive back in the day, no one, you know, the audience aren't interested if you came in on budget or on schedule. It doesn't really affect you guys. Um, so I've c come a little bit looser in that sense. And so the creative side is now 70% and the producer is 30%. So I'm, I'm yeah, I, I think uh, I, I wanted to tell as big a story as possible and the producer and me sort of whimpers in the background. No, but you, you make the impossible possible because you, you have a vision for something and then and then typically, you know, a director will and then the producer will say, well, sorry, that's cost prohibitive, so let's dream a little smaller. And um, and because you don't, you, you can problem solve your way through those obstacles because you have that experience as a producer and also because you're, lar you know, it's largely an independent film for quite a while, I think... It's, it's really unique what you're able to do and you strike a really powerful balance. And what I would say in terms of just witnessing kind of Matthew just as a leader on set and, and what he's doing in terms of in particular, it, you know, the style of filmmaking that is incredibly innovative, um, he is demanding and he does not settle. And it takes a lot of courage to be that way because normally we're all like, ooh, are we gonna get in trouble if we go over, if we don't do it exactly how it was written? And so there's a constant discovery that worked really well, especially, I think, with you. I mean, it was really exciting to see how playful it could be and how things could be discovered on such a giant movie. And it wasn't just like every day we have a plan, we're sticking to it because, you know, this is way too expensive to begin with, you know? So it was, it was very cool. Uh, Matthew, this is, uh, I don't think the audience is going to think this question's coming, but the Taylor Swift documentary actually played a part in this movie. Um, yeah. Uh, well, well <laughs> she didn't write the book. <laughs> um, I will say or, that now. Isn't that what a spy would say? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm not a spy. Uh, um, in theory. So, no. Um, yeah, we're, my... my Daughters watched, um, is it Miss Americana? Um, is that the name? I heard it, yeah. Yes, and um, I was sort of glancing at it, and then I saw the cat in a cat pack, and I was like, what the hell is that? Um, and I, what happens in my life is I see things, and if it grabs my attention, it goes into the, we'll put that in a movie, and I'm not sure when or where, so I'm always just looking at life, and if I, and, and, and you just see something that's inspiring or funny or powerful and you know that becomes that will be in a scene sometime in the near future also what people don't realize is the cat in this film originally was being played by a professional until one day when matthew i oh you want to <laughs> okay i was like i was listening yeah carry on that's really interesting i was, I was just um, giving it right to you <clears throat> yeah no basically after the first day of filming, um, we had a professional acting cat, and um, uh, <laughs> you know what, cats and acting aren't exactly a, um, a, you know, it's not true, they don't. Although it's an anagram of acting cat, I just realized. Um, but um, but uh, yeah, so I went to my daughter's bedroom and said, can I borrow your cat, please? And I took the cat to work for three months, and um, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was actually, at first, a bit weird, driving to work with a cat, looking after the cat, changing the cat's litter, um, being the cat handler as well as the director. But um, he became a very calming influence on me. And, um, and I, think, I think he's great in the movie. So I'm very proud of him. So he is a Nepo kitty, but he's a good cat. He's called Chip. And he can't be here. I wish he was here, actually. But he can't. Uh, Henry, I have an individual question for you. You have done a lot of incredible action set pieces in your career. What do you still think of as like the hardest thing you've done? And what was it like uh, working on this film in comparison to the other action set pieces you've done? Uh, the, the hardest action set piece or sequence I've done uh, is easily the helicopter scene in Mission Impossible. 
that was a crazy. I mean, the, Tom was doing all the real work. He was flying the helicopter. Um, I was just hanging out the back of the other one. But it was. I don't know, that sounds like Rick Henry. I mean, it, it, it was. It was just cold. That was the problem. And, and actually, on on the bravery piece to begin with, because uh, you have a little half harness on um, with a with a, a, a length of cable about that long, and initially you are terrified of sitting on the edge of an open helicopter in the mountains, but by take two you are leaning all the way out, full trust. <laughs> And I mean, it's probably not a good idea, but I'm, I'm here now, so I think it's okay. Uh, but it's amazing how you stop being scared as soon as you end up trusting that harness. Um, in comparison to working with, with Matthew in these action set pieces, as you said, they are absolutely enormous and innovative set pieces every time. And that keeps it interesting for me because I mean, once you worked with Tom Cruise, you think how how can things get better and bigger than here? And Matthew does, and he makes things different and new, working with Sam in rehearsals and trying to fall into sync with each other, and then working out where cameras are gonna be, and you can't cheat in those scenes. You can't be moving the camera around to, to hide a punch. The cameraman can't save you. So you have to be particularly precise and moving like someone else while keeping your character individual. And so working with Matthew in this has been a, has been a new experience for me. Bryce, I have a question for you. Um, you are slowly emerging as someone I can't, let me just say it like this, I can't wait to watch your first feature film. And, right. and so I'm, I'm just curious, uh, was it half- He means as a director, just to be clear, she has done feature films. <laughs> No, no, you, as a director, I'm so, I'm so sorry, director. I didn't say yeah. director. Yeah. Oh, I'm so, so yeah. sorry. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, she's done this before a few times. My bad. Yeah. So uh, what I'm curious about was half the reason you took this role so you could watch Matthew on set and maybe borrow a few things. 100%. Or know what not to do. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, so. it's, it's um, my, my dad is a filmmaker and something that he... Uh, really, filmmaker. really, yeah, fantastic <laughs> filmmaker. filmmaker. Really, he's awesome. Um, but uh, something that that he really sort of laments is that he he loved as as he was a young person and and acting um, full time how he would get the chance to learn from directors, learn from other actors, and and see just different ways in which stories are told cinematically. And um, and so. For me, like I, like I always feel from the very beginning, I've always felt like a spy on a set. Like I, I pick things based on the director, um, and I want to infiltrate and I want to observe and absorb as much as possible. And um, and just you know, working with Matthew, it was. Abs I mean, I wanted to work with him just full stop period as an actor, you know, um, but. As, as someone who, who craves to learn as much as possible as a filmmaker, how he does action, his partnership with Brad Allen, um, the team around him, the way in which he is just absolutely dogged at creating something that is fresh and original and fun, entertaining. Um, it's very, very, very exciting to get to be a part of that and to get to see you know, how the sausage is made, essentially. And Matthew was, um, in the same way that he was incredibly inclusive with Jason Fuchs, as, as a writer, you, you were very, very, very open with me and, 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 and just, you know, exposing me to the process, um, whether or not it was a scene kind of having to do with my character, and I'm, I'm just so grateful for that. I, and, you know, it was really awesome, Matthew, getting to learn from you. Uh. This is a question for the cast, actually. I, I am a, a huge fan of all four of your work. And I'm curious, I love talking to actors about the way that you get ready for, I was like. Sorry, we I both thought, counted. We, we just, you know, Sorry. Catherine and I, like, we're, we're, we're playing with the fairies in our heads right now. So yeah. I am curious, so say hypothetically, you have like a really big scene on a Monday morning. It's either really emotional, really dramatic. You know you need to deliver that morning. How early on are you actually preparing for a scene like that? Is it when you first get the script, you're thinking about it? Is it the week before? Like, can you maybe talk a little bit about your process when you have a scene that you're really nervous about? If it includes Matthew Vaughn, it's probably 20 minutes before, <laughs> given to learn the monologue, which yeah. is something you drops in your How lap. Yeah, about that and, monologue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Matthew, for the train scene, 
uh, originally it was just Sam doing all that dialogue and then he went, oh, yeah, you know what? Why don't you do the dialogue as well? And so there I was thinking, oh, great. Uh, it's my first day on set and I need to let a monologue in 20 minutes and perform it and, and, in, and front of, in front of cadence. actors who I haven't worked with either. Yeah, but you had to match the cadence as well. Like yeah. It was a very high wire act. Yeah, so Matthew, with Matthew, it's 20 minutes. Bravo. Yeah, and from there, from here on out, I would now refuse to prepare until 20 minutes before. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, what's your process like? Uh, I, I think it's early on I get nervous thinking about things. Uh, so hopefully, you know, the fights won in the training camp, I suppose. I, I don't I, I don't know. I mean, there's certain... You watch scenes. a lot of movies. I watch a lot of movies, and I work out with an acting coach and stuff like that. So then hopefully you've got the script. So, what, what does an acting coach teach you now that you know it all? <laughs> well, I mean, there is there are like schools what, for acting, you know, Matt. Yeah, it is a craft. You do train. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's an ever no, but, but you, you, you've, you've Why trained. Why so skeptical? No, I'm not, not skeptical. I'm just like... <laughs> Do you think, I'm, I'm trying, does anyone teach Muhammad Ali to box after he's won? Angelo Dundee taught Muhammad Ali, yeah. After he won? Oh, after he won. Oh, yeah, he well, won. He continued to train with Angelo Dundee. Anyway, okay. it's a fair yeah. point. Um, <laughs> we won't Jagger get into still semantics. takes singing lessons. I think he needs that's cool. to. Well, <laughs> but that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. cool. You could just not. Yeah. You no, know, some people don't go to school. Some people... Uh, Anyway, this is not a this. The listener doesn't yeah. need to hear this conversation. I, don't I would think. hear it. Yeah. It's just like being back on set, <laughs> just really watching is. them on. Really this is. went off in such a direction I did not expect. <laughs> yes. Not even a little. So we'll switch to something else, which is Matthew. You got to put the last Beatles song ever in your movie. So talk a little bit about how you managed to swing that. Oh yeah. Um. Well, I, I, I was trying to find a song for for the. Their, their love song, let's call it. And I needed something with uh, sadness but hope. And um, Charles Martin, who produced the song, um, I was with him and he said, would you like to hear a new or an old new Beatles song? I just couldn't get my head. Well, I thought he was winding me up and then he played it. And we just slapped it on every scene and it just fitted and the lyrics you know, now and then. And, and then we orchestrated it at the end. You hear the orchestra just you know, they, they, I thought it was a beautiful piece of music at that time, and I, then I had to—I had the pleasure of meeting Sir Paul and 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 the rest of the, the well, the Beatles and the Beatles kids, and um, it was just an honor. I, was, I couldn't believe I was getting to work on the last ever Beatles track, and and I had to keep it a secret for a year and a half, which is you know I had it on my iPhone. I wanted to play it to everyone, and I couldn't. Um, so, um, yeah, and I, I'm, I'm very lucky, very lucky. This is a question for everyone. Obviously, the shoot must have been a blast, challenging, every word you could add to that sentence. But when you think back on the shoot, what's like the day or two that you will always remember, whether it be because things went terribly wrong or because it was an amazing day? I don't know. I remember running around in the kitchen with Bryce trying to get out of breath, I remember. But I just wanna say, I think what's, maybe I'm stating the obvious here, but I think what's so original about Matthew's films is that he has a mischievous bad boy, and yet he's also a hopeless romantic. I think that's what makes, am I stating the obvious there? That that's what the, makes his films kind of special. Wow, thank you. It's true, um, no, it's true. Don't you think? Yeah. He's so naughty and he's so romantic. Yeah, those two things. Shows in all but, his films. Naughty and Romance is a very, very, very good sort of um, Valentine's Day moment. Um, and a sense of humor. Yeah. I, actually, one of my memories is poor, was poor Catherine when her, your back went, and she was lying on the deck of the, of, the, um, of the ship, and we were doing stamping and all this stuff. And I was like, Catherine, do you want to leave? She's like, no, I'm good. And you were down there for hours. You stayed on the floor. You just of the stayed tables. lying down. And I was like, Chilly okay. Chilly and nice. And didn't complain once. No, everybody was kind of... Sad Covering you in a blanket, okay? going. Still okay? Yeah. yeah. That was good. That was good. Because I got to watch the stunt, all the stunt yeah. work up close. Wow. Literally, yeah. The, the movie's beautifully edited. The fights are beautifully edited. But I'm telling you, you could watch those fights in person and believe they were killing each other. Yeah. It didn't need yeah. to be edited. You know, That's like, true. like so many movies are going pow, yeah. Sam, and you don't know, you know, nothing connects. This is like a beautiful, beautiful choreography. Yeah. yeah. 
at the end, do you guys want to share any memorable moments or the day or two you'll always remember? I try to forget. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think, uh, all joking aside, any day I was working with Sam and watching him work, and he really is an absolute genius and just, oh, just beautiful to watch before. Well, the feeling is mutual. Bryce? And Brian is lovely to be with too. Yeah, Brian he's is so the best. he's okay. Ridiculous. <laughs> I didn't say he was good as you. I'm just saying he's a, no, he's good. But really, no, really funny amazing. too. I think yeah. everyone thinks of him now as you know the Your Honor or uh, Breaking Bad. But I don't know if you remember uh, yeah. who's what's the Malcolm, Malcolm, Malcolm in the middle. In the middle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 he's so funny. But he's just man. a really funny improviser and just yeah. crazy funny all the time off camera. Yeah. Brilliant. Totally, totally off camera. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, my thing, I hope, doesn't come off as like a spoiler, and so just, like, but I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. Um, the the whirly bird. First of all, I just want to say, um, me doing the whirly bird with Sam does not look like what <laughs> Dua Lipa doing the no. whirly bird <laughs> with Henry Cavill looks like, and um, and it was just, it was just the most fucking absurd thing I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> It was really fun. But you stayed in the moment. And it is the smile. I think what makes the whirly bird work, and trust me, it was something that even when I was shooting it, I was like, is this going to make the final cut? I'm not sure, but I had to pretend. It definitely is, and it would wind the writer up like, no. Like we even came up with it, what only the whirly bird catches the worm. And he's like, no, you can't say that. And I said, yes, we can. Uh, um, but... Um, but the, I think it's the looks between Bryce and Sam in both Whirly Bird moments was, was such joy and commitment in the moment that I think you two made the Whirly Bird work because you made it feel emotionally real. Are you going to make the dance a hit? Here, here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll get sued. We're hoping everyone's going to pick it's it up be, and do the new, Whirly Bird. Hopefully it's the new TikTok sensation. <laughs> uh, so if you enjoyed the movie tonight, there's this thing called social media. And if you are on it, please spread the word without spoiling the film. Sincerely, all of you, thank you for so much for coming out tonight. Thank you. And a big thank you to Matthew, Catherine, Sam, oh, yeah. Bryce, and Henry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, you everyone. Thank you for your thoughtful questions. Yes, and Very thank you, thoughtful. Steve. Thank yes, you. well done.